one of the most stressful things about planning a trip especially to Europe is the budget side of things I'm going to be sharing with you in this video my personal experiences and tips on how you can plan your budget for when you do go traveling around Europe that's coming up in this video what's going on everyone welcome back to a new video here on my channel as I said today we are going to be discussing budgeting for a trip around Europe but in particular, I'm going to focus on interrailing because that was my personal experience and I know that's what the majority of people do actually go for when traveling around Europe, traveling by trains. In this video, I'm basically just going to discuss a budget for Europe. I'm going to give you some rough numbers and then I'm going to give you some key tips that can help you cut back on your spending but still have an amazing time without any, you know, you don't have to miss out on any experiences just to cut back on a few quid. So if you've not seen my interrail video, go and check it out. There'll be a link on screen now to similar videos like this that will probably help you out. If you want to go and check them out, it's much appreciated. Leave a like on this video if you do find it useful at any point. Put any questions or comments you know, down below in the comment section. If you are new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But let's just jump straight to it. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to start off with some rough numbers. Now this is literally my personal experience. These are the exact numbers, roughly, what I actually had for my trip around Europe last year. I was there for like three weeks. And obviously, if you come from a different part of the world, the flights are gonna be different, the currency is gonna be different, so adjust accordingly. And obviously, if you have different itinerary, then it's gonna cost different amounts of money. But this is just basically my number. So I've got numbers here on my screen, and they're gonna be on your screen right now. And basically, flights from the UK to anywhere in Europe, which is what I actually advise if you do wanna save on some pounds, don't just go to the number one destination that you wanna to go to. Maybe go there on the train and just get to the, the cheapest place that you want to visit. So don't just fly into somewhere that you do not absolutely want to go to, just because it's the cheapest, which is what I done, sort of. Go to, a website get all the places you want to go to and then search on skyscanner which is the cheapest one and then you can start your trip from there if it makes logistical sense uh, so my flight was return it was 50 pounds return and that basically included um i think it was like 18 pounds to brussels which as i say i didn't really want to visit there but it was kind of on the way so i kind of rolled with it and then i believe it was 20 pounds something like that coming back from Nuremberg, which was not far from Munich, where I ended the trip in Germany. Um, so the interrail pass for a month, so obviously this wasn't my experience, but this is just some rough numbers for you guys, is either £350 or £470. And you're probably wondering what's the huge difference. The £350, I believe, is 15 days travel within a 30-day period. And the £470, I know this one for a fact, is you know continuous travel throughout the entire month. So obviously, pick accordingly for your interrail pass and that is based on a youth second class ticket so obviously again adjust accordingly now for more information on all that interrail pass stuff go and check out the video again it'll be linked on screen right now but in terms of accommodation that's probably your next biggest spender hostels are around five to twenty pounds per night and um, depending on the location what type of room you want so on so forth uh, hotels are probably from £20 upwards. I'm probably being a bit generous with 20 It's probably 30 upwards, maybe even more. Hotels are quite expensive in Europe. And um, then, obviously, we're looking at food, sightseeing, and daily living, which, depending on what you want to do, this price can be very high, it can be very low. I've put from around £40 to £60 a day, which, again, is quite expensive. Obviously, eating out, going to really expensive sites are going to drive that budget up. So basically, I've got her here that it's going to cost you around £1,500 to £2,500 for one month, which is expensive, and I'm aware of that compared to other parts of the world that you can go and travel for much less. And I know it seems ridiculous to spend that amount of money, but traveling around Europe, that's what you're going to pay. And I'm going to give you some tips right now on how you can actually cut back on that but still have the absolute time of your life. Okay, so a few other things I do want to mention before I actually jump into the tips. You do need to accommodate for other little expenses that you probably don't think about. For example, stuff that you need before you go, like bags and other types of things to go in your travel bag. So you need to accommodate for all that, like padlocks, safety stuff, chargers, portable chargers, stuff like that. So you will need to accommodate for them kind of things. Um, transport when you're there, I'm not too sure if I mentioned that, but I'll just go into a bit more detail. Your interrail pass doesn't cover transport everywhere. There's certain places like the 
U-Bahn, I believe it is in Germany. You're not covered on that. You are covered on the S-Bahn, but not the U-Bahn. So do all this research on the Interrail website before you do go, because some places your Interrail pass won't actually cover you, especially in big cities. So be aware of that. And then obviously buses and taxis and stuff like that, they just add up slightly. And obviously little bottles of water, drinks here and there, alcohol, stuff like that. It all does add up, so you need to budget for all of this when you're actually planning ahead. Right, so my first tip for saving money whilst budgeting for Europe is go and experience the alternate places or the alternative places. And what I mean by that is, why would you go and spend a couple of days, three, four days, lying on a beach in Spain when you could go and do it in Croatia, have the exact same views, the exact same experience, but a lot less cheaper, and you probably get to visit a place that not many people have visited before, so you actually have that added bonus of potentially being one of the first people you know that's visit to a, a certain place and that's a pretty cool thing to put on Instagram and stuff like that. You know, people be like, oh, cool, where's that? Whereas if you put the generic photo from Spain, not only are you spending a lot more money, but you're also just going to a generic place that not many people are going to be interested in because chances are a lot of people have already been there. So go and check out some alternative or alternate uh, places. Eastern Europe is obviously, if you've done your research, the cheapest place in Europe in terms of north and west and all that it's it's the cheapest place and a lot of these places over there are actually undiscovered they're actually really really nice some of my most favorite places are actually in eastern europe which is going to be a video that's actually on the channel right now so go and check it out uh, lake bled and croatia were both up there very very high on my list and not many people have heard of them because they are towards eastern europe they're cheaper and they're literally Lake Bled especially is the best place I've ever visited in my life. So be sure to just go off the beaten path and check out some of these different places. The next tip is do your research, which is obviously what you're doing right now by watching this video, and plan your trip. The most expensive trip is an unplanned one because you have unplanned expenses. If you leave stuff to the last minute, hotels, trains, you probably end up paying a bit more, especially on hotels for the last minute deals, the last minute prices. I said last minute deals, but you don't tend to find many in Europe, to be fair. They just tend to put the prices up. And everything, if you do it unplanned, your schedule kind of goes out the window because maybe you can't get to a place you wanted to. So plan ahead, and that will be the most efficient way of actually having all your accommodation sorted, all your train sorted, Then it will actually bring the price down if you do plan in advance and obviously book things in advance. So be sure to do your research and plan thoroughly before you actually leave to save you money whilst you're out there. Another tip which I have mentioned in my intro videos is use night trains to your advantage. And especially if you're traveling on one of them passes which has 15 days within a 30 day period, because if you use the 7 p.m. rule, which is basically if you travel after 7 p.m. and it's on a night train and you arrive the next day, it's actually only classed as one day travel, whereas obviously if it's at 6 p.m., then they're gonna include it as the day you start to travel and the day you actually get there. So the 7 p.m. rule is actually a really, really handy thing. You do travel after 7 p.m. then it's you know just one day's worth of travel which obviously comes in handy if you don't have the continuous pass and quite often these night trains i actually i think i was on two or three of them they're actually really comfy the you know the little rooms are actually quite cool and they're often very much cheaper than you know a lot of accommodation options that you will have in the city so be sure to check out the night trains before you go and they're a very very you know they're a decent option to not only have comfort get you to a different city but also budgeting wise now another tip is take a youth or student card obviously if you have one because a lot of attractions i found this in europe actually give cheaper prices for students or youth people and the class youth is i believe like under 25 under 26 so if you have a card even your passport or obviously a driving license which is what i was using in france when i went to paris i used my driving license everywhere and it got me in places for free and obviously discounted prices and that basically helps your budget to literally it's it's such a lifesaver because not only are you still getting to experience things you don't have to cut back on seeing things to budget for stuff you're actually getting to see them and you're paying less price and quite potentially especially in france if you go to paris do this because pretty much everything's free it's actually quite cool um i was using my driving license and literally everywhere was free bar the eiffel tower if you were obviously of a youth citizen and from within europe but most places will you know provide student discounts in obviously the main attraction so be sure to keep an eye out for that as an, and again just do your research online it will say online if that is an option now if you really really want to cut back on your budget and you're quite brave 
Then couch surf, if you don't know what couch surfing is, it's basically where you just stay in someone's couch or room if they've got one free. And it's no better way than save money. I've never done it, but I know quite a lot of people do it to save on the accommodation because it's free. I believe it's free, and if it's not, it's literally next to nothing. So there's no better way of saving money than if something's free. So if you do feel comfortable enough doing that, be sure to couch surf and go and check out obviously what couch surfing is before you do it though and make sure you are 100% comfortable with it, not just going off my recommendation because personally, I didn't do it. And finally, be careful where you eat and obviously be sensible about it. If you stay in a hostel, quite often they will give you a free breakfast and often these are actually buffets, so buffet breakfast. So why not stock up on foods for lunch as well? Just take some in your bag, then you've got foods for breakfast and lunch for free. And then if you just go to a supermarket and eat in, in your hostel before you go out, you could pick up a meal for like three, four euros, something like that. You know, if you just go to a supermarket and buy basic groceries that you'd, you know, use at home, then you're spending like less than 10 euros per day on your food, which is a huge lifesaver comparing to if you go to a restaurant where you could be spending upwards of like 30, 40 euros per day. So use them tips to really cut back on your food and it'll save you so much money. But that is all for this Interrail budget. If you have enjoyed, be sure to let me know. And obviously, if you've got any comments about the traveling around Europe budget, be sure to leave them in the comments below and obviously any questions, again, down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to them. If you've not checked out my other Interrail type travel videos, go and check them out. There'll be some videos of Paris and stuff like that if you want some inspiration for your trip. As I said before, leave a like on the video if you did find it useful. Any comments down below. And if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, guys. Till next time, goodbye.